Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined by my esteemed co host, Ricardo Martinez, uh, and a guest co host, uh, Rodrigo, who is uh, head, of, head of all things El Salvador, is the, uh, the uh, bit refills king of El Salvador, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, a fantastic man. And we've also got Jerry potentially coming on later if he sorts out his internet problems. Uh, we'll see, ever the professional uh, podcast. Um, but today, uh, most importantly, uh, we are interviewing Ricardo Frega of the Bitcoin Italia podcast, which is the uh, BIP underscore show on Twitter, if you want to check it out on Twitter. Uh, and the website is also BitcoinItaliaPodcast.it. Uh, so Ricardo, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm very good, guys. It's so nice to be here. Hello, everybody. From El Salvador, I'm Ricardo from the Bitcoin Italia podcast, currently living in El Salvador with Bitcoin only. I love it. That's a pretty important distinction to make. I'll, uh, I'll give you that. Um, so yeah, I guess like what we used to, what we try and do on the podcast, um, we have a guest on, I, I always try to start at the very beginning and then we just build from there. Um, so my question for you to begin, uh, to get us kicked off is what was life like for you before Bitcoin and how on earth did you discover Bitcoin? Oh, huge question. My, um... Bitcoin completely reshaped my life. I was at the, uh, at the time, we we're talking 2016, early 2017, I was living and working in the US um, and I knew nothing about finance, I knew nothing about economics, I knew nothing about Bitcoin. I'm, I've always been a tech geek so into computer into science and then i've been actually remember that perfectly i've been orange peeled by andreas antonopoulos um in us in one of andreas first speeches uh, in uh, in san francisco and when i've heard of this fantastic digital currency ready for the future ready for robots i don't know my mind went to the sci-fi books i loved when i was a kid you know and i said this is going to be the future i have to study massively this thing because it's going to change everything so i started be obsessed actually and then a few years later uh went back to Italy from the US and I started to check out what was going on in the Italian uh, scene and actually nothing was going on there or very little every th single content about Bitcoin was economic was financial I have always been um, an activist for human rights when I was working in the US, I was working in the cannabis, in the legal cannabis industry to legalize cannabis because I'm an anti-prohibitionist. So I work in, in the field of human rights. And so I said to myself, someone has to talk about Bitcoin as a tool to protect human rights and financial freedom here in Italy as well. So I started my podcast. There was actually the first podcast in Italian on Bitcoin. And we don't talk, we don't talk. Price does not exist on the Bitcoin Italia podcast. We don't care. We don't give financial advice. We talk about the technology and the opportunity for our society. Turned out to be pretty successful. And today is my full on full time job. So I'm blessed, guys. Are you familiar with uh, Marco Amadori's work or the Bitcoin Valley that's in uh, oh. Rovereto, Italy, I believe yeah. it's called? Yeah, yeah, Rovereto, exactly. Up in the north. Yes, of course. It, it's okay. a very nice, it's a very nice, interesting project. It's very interesting. They started actually something similar of what happened here in the Bitcoin Beach, but few years actually before the Bitcoin Beach, and um, uh, it's, as far as I know, though, something didn't work there because uh, the Bitcoin Valley is still on. You can still go in that specific place, Rovereto, and buy things with Bitcoin. Uh, but somehow the technology didn't spread out. 
So it's there and it's staying there. Um, Italy is a very different country, is a full on uh, uh, first world country. We have euros, we have an economic and financial uh, system that quote works. And we can discuss what these works mean, but uh, we don't have, we don't feel the need of Bitcoin in Italy at the moment. We, are, we have a decent amount of freedom and a decent amount of economic independence. So Rovereto stayed a very nice experiment that never really catch, never really gained the momentum. Yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense, though, uh, because obviously, as you said, it, uh, I mean, I've only been to Italy once, but um, from what I can see, it's similar in ways to other European countries like Spain and the UK and Portugal, these places that have a fairly, you know, somewhat robust financial system and system and yeah, somewhat fairly good freedoms, obviously you know covid's kind of changed a lot of the freedom aspect but uh but but before that uh, everything was generally okay enough and you know so it doesn't actually incentivize people enough to make a big change in their life um a lot of the time and that, that's kind of what i find in the uk is that people are interested in bitcoin and crypto in general for making money but um there's not enough of an incentive to make them go oh, okay actually i need to change and things need to really change and obviously that may come about sometime in the, in the future and i think it will but I can see it's going to happen. It's going to happen for sure. We use this thing differently. I mean, I'm, I work with countries like El Salvador, like Nigeria, like Afghanistan, like Russia. They have a real use case. They are using Bitcoin to protect themselves from a dictator, from an authoritarian government, from hyperinflation here, not far from here in Venezuela. We don't have those problems yet in Italy and in the European Union. So what Bitcoiners think about the cryptocurrency in my country is uh, I have to huddle. I get, I get uh, a text from people, from fans uh, in Italy, uh, while I've been living this uh, Salvadorian adventure and they text me, they write me on Instagram, on Twitter, why the hell are you spending your Satoshis in El Salvador while you could just hodl and they're gonna get, and their, and their value is gonna increase in time. So there is this obsession. I never got this. I can spend Bitcoin now and buy them back tomorrow. So why should I be obsessed in holding them uh, like, I don't know, uh, Uncle Scrooge? Spend your Bitcoins, friend. They are made to be spent. Yeah, I, 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 I personally agree with you as well. Uh, and I kind of never really saw a problem with spending Bitcoin. I must have spent well over a whole Bitcoin in my life, uh, at least. Uh, yeah, at least. But um. I think uh, I think a lot of the perspective comes from the um, there's a key difference in people who, who who look at Bitcoin as possibly being like the future of finance and actually being utilized for payments, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's people who are just seeing Bitcoin as like, yeah, OK, this is probably something that's going to stick around for quite a while and probably is going to make me money. So I'll just invest in that to then sell it at a later date. Right. Um, and that's the big key, because if everyone just hodled it, nothing's going to happen. No one's ever going to use it. And it's just kind of going to go up and then eventually probably go down in value once everyone realizes that no one's doing anything with it so um yeah this is it has to have people like yourself and and others spending it uh to give the hodlers actual actually some value it is, that's my opinion on it anyway so absolutely if nobody spends bitcoin who's gonna pay for rodrigo at bitrefill <laughs> there you go right there you go right <laughs> right uh, so I was, uh, Ricardo, I was seeing your po your podcast that you have on YouTube that you have do done in El Salvador. Uh, I saw both of them. One when you went up to the to the volcano mining, which was fantastic. And also the one I wanted to talk about. Well, I will talk about both, but I wanted to have, I, I wanted to compliment you on, you know, it's a 10 minute piece about why Bitcoin in El Salvador and maybe six or seven minutes of those are devoted to one of the greatest tragedies that El Salvador has experienced, which was the massacre of 
El Mosote. And I understand now that you're, when you're talking about your background and human rights, etc., that that's how, you know, uh, you don't kind of get it why you do that in the beginning, but then you just close it up, quoting a maxi capitalist like uh, Henry Ford, saying that, you know, if you stop the money, then you stop the wars, which is a fantastic way, because uh, as you say, why is why has El Salvador has had a sort of trade history? And you say because because it has it has been poor, etc. So on that, uh, as, did you visit any other? Because now I know that you've been to Morazan, where El Mosote is. I know that you've been to Santa Ana. I know that you've been to La Libertad for sure. I know when we met, we met here in San Salvador. And um, so these are four of 14 different departments here, they are called. Have you had the chance to visit them all? Or, and what do you, how do you think they are in terms of readiness? How is the Bitcoin law being or, or ac adopted here in El Salvador, Bitcoin in general? What is your experience? It's a huge question, but you know, we have time, I guess. I'll try. I, I do my best, Rodrigo. Um... Yeah, first of all, let me say that the YouTube video that you're talking about, about the civil war in El Salvador, was very important for me to make. And even if it's not specifically Bitcoin related, it is. Because, you know, I come from Italy. We all come, most of us come from lucky country, first world country. And we tend not to care why there are so many poor and endangered countries in the world, right? We forget about their history, but our history is what made us today and we are privileged we i, I never I, I never did nothing to deserve being born in a first world country and in a peaceful moment for my country so in my work it's always very important to remind people that we are just one mankind that we share one word and that we live in different environment and nobody has to be blamed for the country he's born into so uh, why El salvador which is a beautiful land so pristine there's water here there's agriculture there's everything you know uh, that a country need to provide for its people because this country has been used and abused systematically by colonialism uh, by the spain empire first and then by the us uh, secondly, and then horrendously hit by a bloody civil war and by corruption. So there is a reason why El Salvador needs Bitcoin. It's not that the Salvadorian people, they don't want to work on, or they don't want to be better or they don't want to be richer. They can't because they got stuck in an economical politi political system that, is a, that, it, that has been a downward spiral for them. Bitcoin is the thing that can stop that spiral if we inject in if we inject it in the system in the right way. Uh, I spent five, almost five weeks in this country. I toured them I, I toured it basically all i've been also in uh, suchitoto i've been in the south i've been in la union i've been in the southern beaches of la cuco so i, I think i have a, a very a, a complete view on what's going on in the country. I made a living here in El Salvador using Bitcoin only for five weeks. I never touched a dollar or a credit card. So it is possible, it is already possible. And this is great, guys. It's something we shouldn't overlook. What I did here for five weeks was unthinkable one year ago. And we have to thank uh, the Bitcoin law for it, because everyone in this country now, not everyone, 2.5 million Salvadorian, they have a, a Bitcoin wallet, some kind of something that looks like a Bitcoin wallet, that it's the Chivo app, and that uh, is a way you can pay them in Bitcoin. That's what I did. Um, at the same time, what I found out 
touring the country is a huge lack of education. And this is something that it has to be addressed. Um, millions of Salvadorians, they got rushed into the Bitcoin law without knowing what Bitcoin is. Nobody told them. They have been given a, a, an application, a Chivo, that it's a custodial application and that has so many problems and nobody told them how to use it. Um, what is financial freedom? Nobody told them that there are other wallets available that they could use and they could benefit from. Uh, they don't know the difference from a lightning transaction to an on-chain transaction. They don't know the basic of Bitcoins. And I think this was a, was a mistake by President Bukele because if you, uh, it's not about giving people Bitcoin and a wallet, it's about giving people education uh, and, and knowledge in order for them to use this tool and make their life better. Um, the Northern, and maybe later we can talk a little bit more in details of this if you guys like. But to end your question, Rodrigo, um, of course, San Salvador, the capital of the city, is a very Bitcoin friendly city. Of course, the beach, uh, the Bitcoin beach where I'm cur currently, it's super Bitcoin friendly. The north of the country was very Bitcoin friendly. Uh, Santana, for example, the southern, uh, not so much. Um, for what I understand, it's more it's it's more poor. This is the southern part of the country. There is more uh, immigration, emigration from that part of the country. So there are actually a lot of remittance on the Chivo wallet, but people exchange them in dollars straight away. They don't really use the Chivo hub that much to to pay, and. Um, um, of course, when you get completely outside the touristic routes, it gets more difficult. It gets more complicated because that, that's the thing, you know, this is a very uh, cash oriented society. Everyone in El Salvador use cash, piles and piles of dirty dollars. So uh, when, they, when they deal with other Salvadorians, their technology to go is cash. There is the incentive though, if they work with tourists, if they work with people that is actually asking them to buy in Bitcoin, then something is gonna happen in their mind, you know? And they are gonna tell each other, that's an opportunity we shouldn't miss and they download the app and they are open to use it. And when you show them how to properly use it with a wallet that is not Chivo, they thank you. They are thankful because nobody told them that. So I've been educating a lot of Salvadorian dur during the, this month and a half. And once again, the driver is the incentive that's why it's important for you guys that are, that are listening to this podcast. Come to El Salvador, spend your Bitcoin in El Salvador, pretend to use Bitcoins in El Salvador. Don't give up. Don't use dollars here. <laughs>